This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me Coffee, and YouTube. If you'd like to support me, you can find the links below. When you look at the type of content that Praveen Mohan makes, you'll be struck by two things. One, how outlandish his claims are, and two, Despite all this, how big his channel is. I mean, look at the topics of some of these videos. Ancient technology, mobile phones and tablets, how Shiva was basically an ancient astronaut, flat earth, UFOs, and a lot more. He's clearly a conspiracy theorist and some of these ideas, despite being hilariously impossible, get a lot of appreciation. And he has a huge fan following. Why is that? Today we'll discuss why so many people love his ideas and we'll use him as an example to understand what makes pseudoscience so glamorous when compared to science. Welcome to Critical Thinking 101. My name is Pranav, you're watching Science as Dope. Let's begin. I have to begin with an apology. I don't know if Praveen Mohan himself will ever watch this video, but I hope he will because this section is addressed to him. Long time subscribers of this channel will remember that I'd made a video on Praveen Mohan before. For everyone else watching, parts of that video including its thumbnail and my tone in the video were definitely offensive. At the time what I thought was I was being humorous and entertaining and I thought that would add value to the content and I thought if I didn't do it, nobody would watch my tiny channel's content. I had around 1k subs back then I think. I think I psyched myself up in my own head thinking I was David fighting Goliath. Whatever my reasons were, what I did was definitely wrong and for that, I sincerely apologize. I'm sorry. And when Praveen copyright strike me, I called him out to put pressure on him because I saw myself as a victim of bullying. He was just defending himself. I may have won that copyright battle, but I think I still lost in that video. I can't go back and change things now, but the least I can do is remove those two videos from my channel, which I have done. However, I still stand by my criticisms of Ravin that I laid out in that video. I'm gonna lay them out here again, but this time I'll make sure not to use that same tone. Now, I don't want this video to get an unfair copyright strike like my first video did, so I won't play much of Praveen's content here. Let's analyze a recent video of his where he claimed that ancient Indians had cell phones and tablets. And all he has to go with are these carvings he found in a temple that look like someone operating a mobile phone and a tablet. Okay, so before you jump to a conclusion like that, wouldn't you want a little more evidence than just this? Let's discuss how to actually interpret this. Look at cell phone technology today. Apart from your handsets which you make calls with, cell phone technology also requires mobile towers for each region that you want coverage for and knowledge of electromagnetic waves and how to convert your voice into signals that these waves can carry. None of which we have evidence for from that period. So wouldn't you call it a wild leap of imagination of Praveen Mohan to make this conclusion? This tablet with a stylus, which is literally what he says in the video, requires knowledge of touchscreen technology, battery technology, a basic understanding of electrostatics and electrodynamics. When you don't have all the this evidence, isn't it at least reasonable to look for that evidence before you make a conclusion like this? Most Praveen Mohan videos are like this. I'll leave a link to his channel below, you can have a look yourself. If you ask Praveen why do you make conclusions like these, I'm sure he'll say, I never said they were mobile phones. I just asked what if they were mobile phones. Yeah man, you never said it, you only implied it. I want you to be aware of this red flag you'll find in Praveen Mohan videos and most conspiracy theorist videos. The conclusion itself is always a question or they'll pose a question in the beginning which they'll never answer in the video. Whenever you see that, recognize that it's a red flag. I could just analyze more of Praveen's videos and claims but what's the point of that? I've seen enough of them to understand they're extremely unreasonable like this one. I think it might be far more useful to discuss why people fall for ideas like these. And I think there are two reasons. 
Teak Bimanas, for example. They supposedly advanced flying machines that existed in India thousands of years ago. I've done a whole video on them a while back. I'll link it in the description. But basically in that video, I showed you with evidence how Vimanas are basically nothing but the, a figment of the author's imagination. Even though there are texts describing its construction, I showed you this paper published by Aeronautical Engineers that talks about how it's not only impossible to construct, even if it were constructed, it's aerodynamically impossible for this thing to fly. Even this mobile phone idea like what Praveen Mohan talked about, even if it were a mobile phone, it lacks the technology technology and capability for it to work as one. In all these kinds of pseudoscience, I see a common trait. And I think this is why people often fall for it. See, anything in science and technology must have a cause leading to an effect. A simple mobile phone has a lot of technology to enable your voice to reach another person. Only if you have all this, can you have this. But in pseudoscience, you only need the effect. Because things in science are limited by the availability and execution of all this, it cannot be anything you want. But because pseudoscience doesn't have all that limitation, it can be as glamorous as you want. Imagine how cool it would be if we had these flying machines that could travel at lightning speed and have insane combat mechanics and stealth and invisibility. And all of this a thousand years back, who cares if it doesn't obey the laws of physics? It's cool to think about it, right? This glamour of ideas like these, because it can go anywhere that imagination leads you, is what lures some people to believe ideas like these. But there's one more reason that makes it even more tempting for many people to believe. To some people, the mere thought that these ideas came from their religion, from their temples and carvings, or texts written in their sacred language, or from their land or their ancestors, it fills them up with so much pride that they don't stop to think if these ideas are even legitimate or if any of them are realistic. This is an eco boost to a lot of people who don't care if they're being deceived. And I've said this in a video previously, sure, go ahead and be proud of your ancestors, but don't do that at the expense of your reason and rationality. And I think Praveen Mohan is a great example for the fact that things won't be true just because we want them to be true. Now, why do I even make a big deal out of things like these? I should just let people believe what they want, right? Here's my answer. I could just fight harmful forms of pseudoscience that exist like homeopathy and alternative medicine and ignore all these harmless ones like Vimanas and Praveen Mohan with his temples and mobile phones. But here's the problem with that. Let's say I'm successful and these harmful forms of pseudoscience go away and harmless pseudoscientific beliefs remain. These beliefs will then form the fertile soil out of which new forms of pseudoscience will sprout and grow and these can be harmful. I fight harmless pseudoscience because believing in them makes people prone to believing in nonsense that can harm them. It leaves people unable to distinguish between what's real and what's clearly not. And such a person is easy prey for the next scammer who wants to come along and sell you their miracle cure. The theme of videos on this channel can be unfriendly towards sponsors. As a result, I have to support myself and this content on generous support from all of you. I highly recommend you support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee for continued support or one-time support respectively. Alternately, you can support me on YouTube through memberships or that thanks button. You can also check out my website or my merch. Links are down below. If you like this video, you might also like this one I did debunking the idea of Vimanas peddled by many creators. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, remember, science is dope.